This is episode number 79 with video production freelancer Cecilia Stevenson. Hello everyone, I'm Julian Placino, and welcome to the Pathways to Success podcast, where I interview experts on leadership, personal development, business, health and fitness, and many other topics to help you find your unique pathway to success. Having a deep recruiting background, I leverage my ability to attract top performers and conduct in-depth interviews to uncover the secrets to success from a highly diverse group of experts, then share these lessons to help you find your unique pathway to success. Thanks for tuning in, and I'm looking forward to connecting with you soon on the Pathways to Success. This episode is brought to you by Focusrite. Focusrite is a global music and audio products group that makes audio interfaces for recording musicians and podcasters in my case. So I personally have been a Focusrite customer since the inception of this podcast. And to this day, I still produce the podcast using the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. So whenever I invest into any kind of technology, I look for three things. Number one, I look for quality. I want to make sure whatever it is that I invest into creates that desired outcome with great quality. Number two, I look for ease of use. Now, although I am technically a millennial, I'm horrible with technology. So whatever it is that I invest into, I want to make sure it's easy to use. Lastly, because of that previous issue, I want to make sure they have great customer service in case I have any issues and support questions. And having been a Focusrite customer now for over a year, I can absolutely say they check all three boxes. So for all of you musicians or my fellow podcasters out there, for all of your audio interface and preamp needs, make sure to check out Focusrite at focusrite.com. That's F-O-C-U-S-R-I-T-E dot com. Welcome back, everyone, to this week's episode of The Pathways to Success. And this week on the podcast, I'm featuring Cece Stevenson. And Cece and I have actually known each other, man, I want to say since 2014. And she's really special to me because she was there at the very beginning of my acting and talent career. And she was really integral in helping me feel comfortable on set. She was the first person who's ever put makeup on me, who's ever mic'd me up. Uh, and she really helped my confidence and, and uh, my ability to kind of develop as a talent. Um, Well, since then, she struck out on her own, and she's a very successful freelancer now. And for me, I have always kind of had a steady job with a recurring income, and it's very predictable that way. But I've always been fascinated about how people were able to just kind of burn their bridges and and go out into the marketplace and succeed. And she's been able to do that. And now she has more business than what she knows to do with. Uh, So on this podcast, uh, we talk about how she's been able to do that. Tips as a freelancer, uh, the importance of networking how she really became fully independent without having a quote-unquote safe and secure job, Uh, the importance of how faith has impacted her success and how she sees the world, and also the importance of purposeful work. So I I call this episode Faith, Work, and Following Your Dreams because that's really what CC to me is all about. So this is an amazing episode. I'm so blessed to to have her as a friend, and I'm so excited to see what she brings into the world. Uh, So make sure to tune in, take notes, and on to the interview. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the Pathways to Success, where we conduct interviews to inform, educate, inspire you to find your unique pathway to success. Today on the show, I have CC Stevenson, professional freelance video editor, producer extraordinaire, and uh, of course, my special guest co-host, Jason Croft, video marketing strategist. So uh, today, we're going to learn about CC, what she's up to, and sh- how she can help you find your unique pathway to success. Sound good? Yeah. Cool. CC, do you remember how we met? I do. How did we meet? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and it's so, the reason why I think that's significant because I feel like you've grown so much <laughs> from the last time I saw so you. So have you though. Like. And what's interesting is that our paths are kind of intertwined in the fast. media space. Wow. That's exactly what I'm saying. Dang. Yeah. That's rude. That's, that's really pretty brutal. Rude. Yeah. I, mean, I like to get, get down to business. You know? <laughs> yeah, Just say I know. How Just it is. come on the show, insult the host. Yeah. Work I know, out man. Somewhere. I don't think you work out enough. <laughs> yeah. Right. But it was probably, I think it was 2004. 15 or 2016 it was a couple of years ago it might have been 15 it might have been yeah, yeah. 15 you because you were still working full-time was I an intern I, I, still I think you at that time I did know you were the only full-time person at Icon. okay so yeah okay. but it was definitely towards the beginning so yeah I was working at this production company mm-hmm. and <laughs> Julian was a client of ours um, he he reached out to my boss on this website called Thumbtack. Was Thumbtack, that right? yeah, it was an outsourcing um, uh, bidding website for yes, video production. Yes, and so yeah. you, you accepted Greg's bid, or Greg's bid, uh, mm-hmm. and you came in, and you wanted to you wanted to make this YouTube channel 
um, talking about, I think, job search. Job searching. Okay, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And and so you wanted you wanted to, us to like kind of help you film it because you knew nothing about film and mm -hmm. like all that stuff. Still don't. <laughs> that part hasn't. <laughs> that hasn't changed. So yeah. Um, so yeah, you came in uh, and we shot the video for you. And I remember I remember I edited it <laughs> actually. You were editing it yes. right in front of me. Was that okay? Yeah, because yep. you started editing right afterwards, and we went into the I don't know. It was the, it was the second production room or whatever. Okay, yeah, the editing bay. Yeah, um, yeah, and we right. were cutting it all together, and uh, I remember you saying like, "Yeah, I want these keywords to flash up and uh, whatever." It was like a two minute long yeah. video or something. Uh, so that was it. You were a client. Mm -hmm. um, was it, was it, how was he as a client? Was he really demanding? Yeah, he was the worst. Was like after <laughs> after he left, we were like, "I hope that guy never, never comes back." <laughs> No, he was he was super. Uh -oh. He was so super. In fact, that my boss decided decided to hire him back as a talent. So he did so well in his own video that Greg was like, <laughs> "I'm going to use that guy in other clients' videos." So we hired him for I think an American Heart Association. Yeah, um, then Hilti, and then Hilti and ABM. ABM. There's nice. like several. Yeah. We came, he came back and worked for us so yeah that's how we what was so crazy is that the whole reason because way back then this whole podcast and everything was originally going to be a youtube channel and i wanted that first youtube channel video to be really professionally done so i wanted to outsource it and get someone to do it and greg was the only one with the studio which is one of the big selling points for me i was like this guy's legit he's pro and that's why i decided to move forward with you guys but i remember the first shoot i had no experience being in front of a camera or even reading from a teleprompter that was my first time and I remember after doing it, I went straight through the three minute reading without messing up. And the production crew was like, what was that? Oh my gosh, like how long have you been doing this? this? Yeah, and, and of course, not having any frame of reference, I was like, whatever, sure, whatever. But, and, then, and then Greg immediately hired me to be in one of his training videos afterwards. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. But all that started to stem into the whole Kim Dawson thing, also yeah. became a portfolio for me. Yeah. And Cece was so important. You were in most of the shoots. I was. And she made me feel so comfortable because it's such a scary thing to be in front of lights and camera uh, and, and everything. And, and she made me feel so comfortable with the whole setup. And you, you were the first person to ever put makeup on me. Aww. <laughs> right? And mic me up <laughs> and, and make it not weird either, because yeah, that's always weird. <laughs> So, Especially the way you were doing makeup in the beginning. <laughs> it was a different, I brought my own but lipstick. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, so Cece, you're like this great video person now, independent entrepreneur, mm. fully self-sufficient. But like, how did you first develop this love for video production, editing, and all that? Wow. So I was actually thinking about this. Like the very first thing that got me interested and kind of like got me on this path. Yep. So there's this, um, I, it was when YouTube was first becoming a thing. So back in early 2000s, when was, when was that? Well, so 2005 I I ish, school. around okay, there, yeah. yeah. Middle school? I oh, think you're so. a child. So <laughs> wow, my goodness. I graduated college 2005. <laughs> so, <Anyway. laughs> Um, so I remember YouTube was just coming out and I was watching these like little music videos. They were like kind of fan made music videos mm -hmm. of like these TV shows that I liked. There's this one called Avatar The Last Airbender, which is this <laughs> great Nickelodeon kids show. Uh, and so Horrible I would. Horrible movie, but great show. Yeah. yeah wow. So nice. plug for Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would watch these little fan made music videos mm -hmm. um, that people would like take clips from the TV mm -hmm. shows and just like put them to music. And I was just so just in love with these. And I, I remember I would I would be like sitting at the computer, I would like find five that I wanted to watch and I would pull them up in different tabs and I would have to wait like 15 minutes for them to load. <laughs> <laughs> and like once it was loaded, I would like watch it. And just like, oh, this is so cool. Like, how are these people doing this? And so that kind of sparked this like, well, I want to do that. Like, I want to mm. figure out how to make these like little music video things. And so I discovered Windows Movie Maker, ah, which is a free I, I application did movie maker, yeah. on Windows. Right. And I was like, this is the best thing ever. So <laughs> I, and I, I couldn't figure out how they got the actual clips from the show. Mm. I, I wasn't that technologically savvy, but I decided that I wanted to make my own music videos using pictures. So I would like pick a song and then like download a bunch of pictures and just like put them together to the song. And I don't know where those exist to this day, probably like on some old computer buried deep in the depths <laughs> of our house. But um, <clears throat> so that was how that started. And then I eventually progressed to, uh, oh no. <laughs> so the first like video video that I made, again, it was a music video we had this crappy little webcam and like a laptop computer, like a big clunky computer. So this, I think I was in, I don't know, maybe late middle school, maybe still early high school at this point. 
And my brothers and I one day decided that we wanted to make this like spy music video. And so we got, we had the webcam and <coughs> we had this like laptop. So we, we went around the house filming like just the various scenes of this spy music video, carrying the laptop <laughs> like the entire way and just like setting it up and they'd like do something. And so like I edited that together and did a couple other ones like with this little webcam set up. Uh, and that was just kind of the beginning. And then eventually I was so excited. I saved up money and I bought my very first little video camera. Oh, nice. And it was one of those like handheld ones. It's like maybe this, I don't know, like that big, you know, like mm -hmm. not super, not even HD, like standard definition. <laughs> um, but man, I used that sucker like, oh, <laughs> so much. I was so, like every little thing I could be filming, like the cat, the hamsters, like my brother's basketball game, like anything and everything I was just like filming. And I'd make these silly little music videos with my brothers to like Kelly Clarkson songs or like, I don't know, whatever, anything I could think of. And, and so that was just kind of like what I did. It was mm -hmm. a hobby, it was just all for fun. Never ever in a million years thought it would like turn into anything professional. <laughs> and so then like we go to high school, or we go to, we go to college, I go to college and um, kind of like continue like with this as a hobby, but since my brothers weren't there, I recruited my friends and I said, <laughs> guys, we're gonna make music videos. Uh, and they were like, cool, sounds good. So I made a bunch of like just super silly, cheesy music videos. Mm -hmm. And uh, and eventually I remember the first kind of like professional video thing that I did was with 12th Man Productions, uh, which is, I went to Texas A&M and um, 12th Man Productions is the basically video department for the athletic department. So they make all yep. of the promotional videos. They do like the big screen shows like at the sporting events. And so I, at the end of my freshman year, or actually I remember very specifically this moment, I was with my mom. I think it was at the beginning of my freshman year. We were at a, one of those kind of um, football, uh, it wasn't a real game, a scrimmage. It was like a football mm -hmm. scrimmage. Mm -hmm. And I saw people down on the field with these like big honking cameras on their shoulder. And I was like, that's so cool. Like, I'd love to do that. I wonder who those people are. Fast forward to the end of the year, I find out who those people are and I apply to be an intern with 12th Man Productions hmm. and get accepted, like scream and shout. Like, this is so exciting. <laughs> I was just so pumped. And then sophomore, junior and senior year, I worked with 12th Man Productions and I got to be a camera op for like football games, basketball games, baseball oh, games, nice. like all these legit, Texas A&M sporting events. And I was there on the basketball court, like following the ball and just whatever. It was, it was time of my life, it was so fun. And I, the, my senior year, I was on the football crew. So I was on the field. And this was when the whole Johnny Manziel thing was like, was happening, oh, when big yeah. Johnny football, before he kind of went yeah. downward. Um, but so yeah, I was there like with Johnny football and coached someone and all the football players. And it was just like the freaking coolest thing ever. <laughs> and did you major in uh, no, like an RTVF so they or? No, they don't have an RTVF. Uh, radio film TV program. Mm -hmm. um, so the closest I could get yeah, was all of Texas A&M. They don't. Go on. They have, they have agricultural broadcasting <laughs> journalism. <laughs> agricultural. <laughs> um, Exciting. <laughs> so you have to take like history of corn classes and whatever. I'm not really sure <laughs> what that means. Um, but I did telecommunication media studies, which is just in the mm, communication okay. department, and it yep. focuses in the media. So that was as close as I could get uh, to like a film degree. Um, so. So you do that through college? Yeah, so do that through college. Did a couple summer internships with like local, um, like news, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, discovered I did not like the broadcast news world side of things. So I was what like, didn't you like about it? Um, well, a I don't really watch the news. Okay. Um, nor, nor should you. <laughs> nor should I. Okay. It's I didn't <clears throat> like. Um, how you just have to wait around for stuff to happen, mm. or you have to like go out looking for trouble. Bad okay, I gotcha, yeah. Yes, yes. usually bad stuff. When when everyone's excited about horrible things happening because it's good news, that's, that's to me, that's a bad sign. In way of life and all that. That's my two cents. <laughs> Makes sense, okay. So yeah, discovered that was not the world for me. And then um, I think, I don't know, I just kind of, I was just getting more and more into this like video thing. Uh, but I wasn't really sure how to pursue it or or like how, how to do it. Like how does one, mm -hmm. like how do you make a movie? I don't, I don't know anything Was about it that. there though? Like did you want, like having done all this stuff, it felt like it was kind of a hobby, just something that you love to do. But when did it sort of crystallize that you wanted to do this for a living? I think my, mm, that's a tough question. 
I think the end of college, so maybe yeah. like my senior year, I mm -hmm. started to really like, I want to try and get a job in video production. Um, I think is when that happened. Uh, so then after I graduated, I uh, had this degree in telecommunication media studies and I was kind of torn. I was like, well, I don't really know how to do this like video production thing or like I don't really know anyone. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to break into the industry basically. Uh, but I have this communication degree, which you can just do so many things with. Um, and so I was like, well, maybe like that's a more practical route. Like maybe I should try to like get into social media or marketing or like PR. All those things sounded just really like not my, <laughs> but I was like, right. I might have to do that because I don't know how to do this other thing. Mm -hmm. um, so in the months following college, uh, after graduating, I got a couple jobs as like working at restaurants and like retirement homes and stuff like that. And I was basically, I, I, I literally Googled production companies, tech, or video production companies in Texas, mm -hmm. and just like email blasted like all of them. Like, and you were still resume. living in Bryan, Texas? And I, yes, I was okay, still living so in College Station. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just sent out all these emails, even tried calling a few places, just like trying to get a job somewhere yeah. with a video production company. And then on the other side, I was doing like all the online job applications, basically right. with like media communications type mm -hmm. stuff. Um, no, no results, of course. It's just so, job searching is so depressing. Um, <laughs> so that was, that was a pretty rough, um, just several months trying to figure out like, what am I supposed to do with my life? You know? Yeah. Um, and then finally, I think, I think it was December, December 2014, um, I finally got an email back. I got an email back from one of the production companies that I had like sent out my resume How to. How many months between you, your start and then getting some kind of result? Uh, uh, I mean, probably like basically after I graduated. So, okay. so like May several months, December. yeah, roughly. That's pretty um, quick compared to. Oh yeah? Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> well cool. <laughs> it felt like forever. Um, <clears throat> so, so I got an email back from this Greg Kuhn with Icon Video Productions. Greg Kuhn. Greg Kuhn. We're all tied together. It's all tied together. I didn't even know he knew Greg, he knew Greg before, way before I met him. No way? Yeah. Dude, small world. Dude, totally. And, and before this, we filmed with More Creative. Jensen worked, do you know Jensen? Uh, Jensen Jensen is one of the founders of More Creative. He worked with, he was an intern at no. uh, Icon. I don't know. Oh, I was no. surprised he didn't know you either. That's why I was like. Huh, we might have like just missed something. Maybe each other, so, yeah, maybe. yeah. Interesting. Greg Kuhn, changing lives. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For real. So, so I got an email back from him <clears throat> and he said, hey, I have this internship. Um, like, here's the link, check it out. And I was like, sweet, an internship. That sounds good. And what's funny is I, I actually had, art, like, the link that he sent me, I had mm -hmm. actually already seen it. But it was un it was an unpaid internship, and I was like, nah, I'm too good for an unpaid internship. Like, ain't gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. So I just totally ignored it. And then when he sent me that link, I was like, shoot! Like the only guy who has responded to me. You've gotta do it. <laughs> I have gotta. to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so so like I applied, um, and uh, got the interview. So I drove all the way up to Dallas, which is three hour drive. Did the interview, drove all the way back. Um, but actually, at the end of my interview, and I actually didn't interview with Greg, I interviewed with another guy who was working there named Zips. Zips! And Zips! Shout out to Zips, Shout man! Out to Zips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so, so I interviewed with Zips, and he basically offered me, like, offered me the job. Like, oh, you didn't interview with Greg? Mm -mm. No. I think I, like, like, poked my head into his office, like, hey, I'm interviewing, and he was like, sup? And then I went oh, with Zips. That's his interview process. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Okay. But Zip, Zips. She's was, human. All right, you're on, you're, you got it, yeah. She looks normal. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he offered me the internship at the end of my interview, and mm -hmm. I was like, well, I basically accept. Let me kind of like sleep on it, because mm -hmm. I'm going to have to move three hours away, so that's kind of a deal, but. You're not from Texas originally, right? No, I'm not. Okay, Pacific Northwest? Yes, Pacific okay. Northwest. Yeah, all right. Great old state of Washington. Mm -hmm. um, so went back to College Station, like officially decided I was going to do this. I was going to move three hours away where I didn't know anyone and just like do this internship. So uh, I think I went home to Washington for Christmas break yeah. and then uh, what I told Greg and Zips was like, hey, as soon as I get back, I'm moving and we can start like second week of January or whatever. Um, so moved to Dallas and <laughs> found, found a lady on Craigslist who was offering a room for rent. Mm -hmm. um, I think I actually drove up here to meet her um, and like meet a couple other people before like I actually moved in with her because you know Craigslist <laughs> kind of sketch turned out actually to be a like she's fantastic. Yeah, like, actually, you know, first it was it a her? 
<laughs> yes, <laughs> it was. No, legitimate. Yeah, there yeah. is some creepy. Like, if you're looking for housing on Craigslist, I mean, this was a jewel. Like, this was a gem, a diamond in, like, <laughs> amidst of just creepy goo. Mm -hmm. But there is some, like, 40-year-old man looking for female roommate <laughs> companion. It's like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Avoid those ones. Anyway, so I moved to Dallas and did this internship for four months. Um, How did you create an income during that time? <laughs> so, <laughs> I worked. Remember, she said Craigslist. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, I worked four or five part time jobs. I was wow. working like 70, 80 hour weeks. You were oh, hustling, man. Tell so, us about that. That's man. part of the grind that yeah, you need real. to have to succeed. Yeah. So, I would, I would go to the internship during the day. It was uh, like 10 to 6. Yeah. And then after that, I would go deliver pizza for Domino's. Get out of town. Until about like 11 o'clock at night. Go I could sleep. never imagine you as a pizza delivery oh girl. God, do it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's some, there's wow. some fun some fun stuff there. It's It wasn't as, and I was kind of in um, a rougher neighborhood. Like yeah. there were certain apartment complexes that we were not allowed to go into. Like we had to wait at the lobby and they had to come to us oh, because of like past incidents and whatever. And nothing ever happened to me. Like yeah. I definitely had like God and guardian angels like surrounding me the entire time, but there was some like sketchy stuff for sure. So I did pizza. On the weekends, I worked at a Mexican restaurant and then- As a server? Uh, yeah, as a server. Yeah. Um, which, which is, I was like one of like three white people like on the, um, <laughs> on the staff. Um, yeah, which is great. That. When I go to a Mexican restaurant, I don't want to see white people. My food tastes upset. differently now. Yeah. You, you, exactly. You're upsetting me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then I would, so the restaurant that I was working at in College Station, yeah. I continued to work there on the weekends for oh like goodness. big, big events. Um, so like weddings or like graduation Even what, while you were living in Dallas? So while I was living in Dallas. So okay, I so would get through. Okay. drive back. Uh, there were like certain weekends where they had big stuff and I would yeah. go to make, make like 300 bucks or something. So I would drive to College Station for the weekend, yeah. stay with the friend or whoever, work like the uh, work the weekend uh, and then come back and yeah. then like work here during the week. And then on top of that, I was also editing wedding videos <clears throat> for this company in Houston that mm -hmm. I was working with at the time. Um, and I think... I think those were all of the Wow, so jobs. pizza, the, the, the pizza, restaurant, restaurant, editing videos. The restaurant editing, yeah. I'm curious, you were obviously living a very lean lifestyle without <laughs> necessarily a recurring income. What did you learn about managing money? Ooh, I still struggle with that one, <laughs> if we're being honest. Yeah. Um, man, I don't know if I'm qualified to answer that. Uh, well, you survived. I survived. So. It was it was it yeah. was pretty it was pretty rough though. Like, but I mean, how did you deal with that uncertainty? Because me, I've always since I was sixteen, I've uh -huh. always had a full time job. Believe it or not. Yeah. Wait, am I lying? <laughs> when I, okay, when I was eighteen, I've had a full time job since then, okay. but not sixteen. But yeah, I've always had get a steady income. That's why I've always admired entrepreneurs who are willing to to sort of do various jobs. Yeah. But without a consistent income, like Jason, yeah. you've been doing that for as long as I can remember. Like, how did you deal with that uncertainty? Were there points where, like, you didn't have any money in your bank account? And you're like, okay, I gotta, I gotta make something happen. Here. Yeah, I think there were times like that. I think so. I think during that, I, I must have had some sort of cushion, like yeah. a little bit of savings still. I think mm -hmm. during that point, uh, I wasn't like completely broke. Mm -hmm. If I, it's been a while, if I recall. Um, but to like to your point. Mm -hmm. um, I've kind of been the opposite of that. Like I've always been just odd jobs here and there. And like yeah. in college, like I was even, I was working not full time probably, but like mm -hmm. I had the internship and yeah. uh, did like just other odd jobs here and there. So it's always been just like doing whatever so you can. So we're used to that. To survive. Yeah, okay. so it's just yeah. the way it is. I don't know. Um, so yeah, did all that, worked for whatever, whatever it was, four part-time jobs, yeah. did the full-time internship, had no friends, had no life. I like, watch Netflix kind of in my free time. Like I didn't know anyone. Like this was Wait, four so months. Your, mo your family moved here? No. Well my, so my mm, kind of complicated. At the time, yeah. all of my family was up in Washington. Okay. So I was all alone all by myself. In Texas, let yeah. alone in like Dallas. Right. Um, so yeah, so I like, I didn't know anyone. I had no life. <clears> it was work, 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 work yeah. to get through those four months. And I, I was able to do it because I knew it was only four months. I knew that there was like, there was an end goal. Like after okay. after four months, something's gonna happen. Was there a guarantee of conversion at the end of the four months or you still didn't know? Um, I, it was uncertain up until, um, as the as the internship like came to a close, yeah. they were kind of like hinting that like, we might wanna keep this girl a long um, time. Yeah, okay. So. Cause you're a hustler and you're, you're exactly, a great job. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, 
so I, I kind of knew at the end of the internship something might happen, whether it was with right. these guys or now that I'd like built up this experience, I would have something to like show other companies be like, hey, this is what I've done, this is what I can do. Yeah. Hire me. I've Either way, it's, yeah. it was worthwhile. Right. So exactly. it kept you pushing forward. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so got through the four month internship, learned so much <clears throat> just about the professional video production world. And Greg's been in the business for 20 plus yeah. years. So that's yeah. a great dude to learn from. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just learned so much during mm -hmm. that time. And then kind of like I said, at the end of that internship, uh, he liked me so much and I would kind of just become an integral part of yeah. like their company that they couldn't afford to lose me. Sure. So. And, that, and honestly, that's I mean that's a great lesson in that you know because there there is that, <clears throat> and you did it yourself. You shifted from that mindset of like, I'm not going to do that yeah. <laughs> internship to kind of forced into like okay this is my option, mm -hmm. but then taking that and running with it rather than just like eh, I'm in this internship they're not paying me mm -hmm. anything yeah and you would have maybe not even lasted the four months much less gotten to a job but you took that and you <laughs> you wedged yourself <laughs> in there like you're going to make them rely on you. Yeah. And that is the quintessential way to succeed mm -hmm. in that, I think. Yeah. And I met a lot of interns at the studio, and mm -hmm. some of them just did not feel committed. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, it's not for everyone. Yeah, yeah. no, exactly. Yeah, for sure. And wow. it also <laughs> happened that just like my natural skill set, skill set, skill set, uh, as, as I was there in the internship and as I was learning all these things and kind of like seeing my own development and yep. like the things that I was just naturally good at, um, like the skills that I had kind of just fit perfectly into mm -hmm. what they needed anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a combination of, yeah, it was just, it was kind of just like, a, it was a perfect fit. It was mm -hmm. like, I was the missing puzzle piece to their little, little pretty puzzle. Um, so they hired me as the production coordinator. Yeah. Uh, and I stayed with the company for a year and a half. Well, first, how was that? After all this time of struggling and uncertainty, you finally had a full-time yeah. gig. What Man. was that like? So that was like the opposite of what I've had, you know, all Stability. of these. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, I slowly like <clears throat> quit all of the like part-time jobs. Mm -hmm. like, I quit at Domino's and at Desperado's and um, I, I quit doing the wedding videos and um, I just started like doing that full-time. Mm -hmm. And it was nice. <laughs> it was nice just like going to work, working, and then having free time. But like with yeah. this free time, now I had free time and I had no friends or no hobbies or didn't know anyone <laughs> to fill up this free time. So it started to like feel that loneliness that I had been kind of not ignoring, but just hmm. didn't have time to feel before because I was so busy trying to survive. <laughs> <coughs> right. Yeah. Um, so then the hard part became kind of the social aspect of it. Like I had work and I had a steady income, mm -hmm. but I didn't have any friends. Like I had friends Aww. at the internship, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's cool. You know, it's just part of the growing experience. Sure. And like I learned how to deal with being by myself and being lonely and like mm -hmm. how to like make friends and like join church groups and join other groups. Um, so it was a great, just growing process. Mm -hmm. And as a production coordinator, um, I did, I took on kind of more of a managerial role yeah. and like training, training the other interns that then came in. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, my job kind of shifted from like doing the hands-on stuff to doing more like, being a manager. And, running like, a training. studio company. Right, and yeah. running the studio basically. Right. Um, so yeah, at the end of like that year and a half, I basically was running the mm -hmm. daily operations of the studio. Um, and then Greg, like Greg would go out and he would get the clients and he would do like the big vision executive producer stuff. And then mm -hmm. I was like at home with the troops basically and like, delegating tasks and making sure projects got finished and um, all of like the little things were taken care of. Uh, so that was just super valuable experience, mm -hmm. learning, yeah, learning how to do that. Um, but then at the end, so I did that until the end of, until 2016. So mm -hmm. at the end of 2016, I, and actually this, I had, I had kind of been on my heart for, for several months leading up to the end of 2016, but I kind of got the bug, the itch to, just like jump into the freelance world mm -hmm. and <laughs> so what's interesting to me about that is that I'm always like fascinated how people are able to leave you know a safety net of security <laughs> and just go out there and branch out <laughs> into the unknown but you actually already had experience doing that so maybe was it yeah. not as scary for you then? Oh, it was definitely scary yeah um, what was it what was it that you were craving from the market versus kind of you know having a steady gig I I crave the freedom freedom to choose what I worked on Interesting. when I worked. So kind of kind of another big factor was um, I was getting, so <clears throat> there were, 
the summer of 2016, these interns came in for the summer and internship, and they were film students. Mm -hmm. And up until this point, all of my like production experience had been like video, like commercial, corporate, yep. industrial. Right. Completely. And for those of you who don't, I mean, that's a completely different world from the film world. I mean, just night and day. Yeah. Yes. Um, and. <laughs> And I, I briefly did a small thing in college with some film people, um, and unfortunately, like, didn't get to pursue it as much as I wanted. Uh, but it was just, I, I didn't think that was my thing. I thought, like, video production, like, commercial corporate stuff, I thought mm -hmm. that was, like, my calling, like, what I was doing. Yep. But then I met these film students, and up until this point, I thought film was, like, this kind of, like, those, like, snobby, like, f just film people, you know? Like, they're just... Just artists and like. Is that perception out there from commercial to film, and vice versa? Like, do people? I think it's at different levels. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think there's there's I think there's some of that. Okay. It's, yeah, it's more of a creative. Than gotcha. Like okay. The yeah. Industrial mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just had this perception of like film and the people who worked in film, and I was like, that's not my thing. But mm. then I met these film students, and uh, and they just like kind of talked about it and like what they were learning in school and the films they were making, and I was like, oh, this sounds kind of fun. Mm -hmm. like, that, that. that went back to what you <coughs> originally started doing, which was the creative. And yeah, fun yeah, and I guess control, so. You know, from the from, yeah. the, very beginning. from the beginning. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I haven't made that connection. So it kind of yeah, it poked and sparked yeah. all of that. Huh. huh. I like that. Interest. How about that? <laughs> so. Circle of life. Oh, wait, we can't pay for that. Um, so, so I met these film students and just like talking with them and learning about what they were doing, mm -hmm. I just kind of developed an interest in pursuing film. And so, <clears throat> but the thing with um, the thing with that is, I knew if I was working full time and if I wanted to kind of pr try and pursue this film thing now, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to do that if I was working full time. So that's kind of where the freedom part came in. Is uh. I still <laughs> so they say what is it? There's like stuff for your reel and stuff for like the bills or whatever the saying right. is. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> uh, I knew I wanted to kind of pursue this creative like film outlet, but um, I knew that it like didn't pay super great, if at all. <laughs> um, so I knew that I had to continue doing like this video production stuff. Yeah. So that's why I wanted the freedom. If if I got the opportunity to work on a film, mm -hmm. uh, paid or unpaid, I I knew that if I didn't have a set you know eight to five five days a week schedule. I would be able to maybe take a couple of days off or right. to like travel somewhere or whatever. I just, that freedom to like do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, but with that freedom comes a whole bunch of other scary stuff and uncertainty. Yeah. So it's kind of this balance, you know, but to me what was more important uh, and I was willing to kind of face the scary stuff and like yeah. work through that. Um, but yeah, that freedom and ability to like pursue projects that I was passionate about, sure, yeah, and that I wanted to work on, and like work with people that I wanted to work with, um, and just like meet new people, mm -hmm. and I don't know. There's just so much more you can do as a freelancer that you could ever do, like if you're working the same job. Mm -hmm. Which you know, nothing against that. Like that's <clears throat> awesome and great. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's just yeah, yeah. It's, it's just different. It's just a different path. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. So, so I am curious though, because one of the things. And it seems like one of the things that you really value is autonomy and sort of creative expression. And one thing that you and I kind of talked about in our pre-interview was like the importance of following your dream. Mm -hmm. And you really do strike me as someone who's really passionate and really wants to make an impact. So tell me a little bit about how that's sort of governed. And obviously it, it, it turned you into a freelancer, but yeah. tell us about the importance of following your dream. Man, yeah, so a lot of that, um, I kind of, so, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of bring faith into it now because sure, that yep. is a like that was a very big also motivational factor mm -hmm. is I wanted to kind of like use this like video stuff that I'd like been learning and been doing like kind of like in a secular just the regular world yeah um, but I wanted to try and take these skills in some way use them and like incorporate like my faith into them and like mm. either make like faith filled videos or yep. work with faithful people or whatever. Um, so there was this, um, there's this group of this small creative, this small Catholic creative company. Um, so I'm Catholic, just clear that up. Um, and so there's a small Catholic creative company and these two guys, these two guys that I met, um, and I actually had kind of started doing some projects with them while I was still at the full-time video production company. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted, I wanted to do more with them kind of like, I wanted to follow that 
like I wanted to follow that passion of like incorporating my faith into that. And mm -hmm. I knew these guys like were doing that, so I wanted to do more of it. Was one of them AJ? No. Oh. No, does he do that? AJ, AJ VD has got his own YouTube oh, channel. Oh, him. Uh, yeah. No. Okay. Him. Other yeah. people. Um, but so yeah, I wanted to do more stuff <clears throat> with these guys, and uh, so that was again kind of there's so many factors like that mm -hmm. led to this like decision to jump out into the freelance world. But that was another one of them, is wanting to just do more work with them. Um, like with their Catholic Creative Agency. And so we make videos like for the diocese, for local churches, for local like nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. um, it's all kinds of cool stuff. We've made a couple uh, like narrative short films that have like very um, just like Christian messages and sure. whatever. Yeah. Um, and gosh, what was your question? Uh, yeah, so like the importance of like following your dream and how yeah. that's kind of governed your, your decision making. Yeah, so yeah, I guess that dream of just Oh, what's like integrating the two these two very important sure. aspects of my life I guess is a good way to say it um, so like I'm I'm super Catholic like, yeah just practicing Catholic like my faith is very much a part of like who I am and like how I live out my day-to-day -day. Uh -huh. and um, <clears throat> and then like this like work stuff that I love to do like mm -hmm. filmmaking and making videos and like this is just like a passion so I wanted to integrate those two and um, I met these. I met these two brothers. These guys with this Catholic creative agency, and that was one way I could do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I pursued it. Um, and is it is it working? Like obviously yeah. you. Yeah. So so tell me about that. Like, would you say that integrating specifically like your faith and your skills is actually creating the success for you? Because right now you you told it's, me that you're you're actually turning away. Business, yeah. like at first, like <laughs> when you first started, when Cece first started doing uh, the freelancing, she was actually driving Uber. Mm -hmm. She went back to doing odd jobs. She filmed this video that you know she was you know scared and doesn't know what she's going to do, but she's going to follow her dream. Uh -huh. But now, fast forward eight months, and she's turning away business. She's <laughs> being exposed to all sorts of crazy opportunities. And you know, part of the show is unpacking how do people become successful. So, what do you attribute that to? Because you're doing it. You are living your dream now. Yeah, yeah, I. I'm going to I'm going to say God, honestly. Okay. <clears throat> I think that for me, um taking that leap of faith for like all those all the reasons that I did. Mm -hmm. Um and honestly just like trusting it to him and being like, "All right, God, I think this is something that like you want me to do." Um and so like I trust it. I just like, "All right, like you're going to give me the opportunities." Mm -hmm. Um and and so I kind of just like opened myself to like doing anything to like just making it happen, making it work. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had no idea what I was doing. Like from a and I, I like to be very like logical, step by step, practical. Yeah. <laughs> if if you were to just like look at it logically, like girl has full time steady job, <laughs> like not a ton of savings leaves job and like burns through all the money like just not it was not a practical decision sure like, yeah. it was you not wouldn't smart. write this plan for someone exactly yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I would not recommend doing this but um, <laughs> I don't know I gosh I'm trying to articulate trying to articulate this um, I just I, I committed I said all right I I'm gonna do whatever it takes to figure out how to do this and mm -hmm. so I started like asking for help, basically. I think I reached out to you. I just reached out to everyone that I knew. Um, Jason gave you advice that you implemented. I wanted yes. to make sure to capture that. Before, <laughs> when you were, you were, I think you were in the bathroom, she was like, I implemented a piece of Jason's feedback and it was bearing result. What was that? So, so yes, I, I reached out to Jason. Yeah. He connected me with this guy named Jason Croft. So I reached out to Jason and I said, hey, let's get coffee. Uh, and he was like, hey, that sounds great. I'm paraphrasing, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said, hey girl, let's do that. <laughs> hey girl. So. One of the pieces of advice that he gave me, and I think I even like wrote it down in my journal or something, because yeah. I wanted to remember it, is he told me to network, but to like creatively network and to um, pick specific, like pick kind of what it is that you think you want to do, mm -hmm. and then find someone who's doing that, whether it's on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever. Just go find someone who's doing that and just reach out to them and do like what you're doing with me right now like do that with them and like get advice from them like wow. reach out to Jason them. Cobb changing lives my <laughs> man all right well because so many people <clears throat> in, in your situation to jump I mean they, they they do the checklist that everyone does they go to the 
association meetings or they go here and they, what what they think is the quote unquote like let me go I have to I know I'm supposed to network so let me go to this place that says it's a networking place and they stand in room and, they, and everybody shows up and they all want to be hired and they won't all want to get jobs and none, none of that works so it's that was my sort of point of view was like okay exactly what's that role and and to not reach out the second thing is exactly what you were doing in the very beginning which is just email blast email blast mm-hmm. email blast you know to the people who own these production companies or things like that instead of okay let's take take a step back and go okay who's actually hiring freelance people at these companies find that role the mm-hmm. production coordinator mm-hmm. some, then get in front of them mm-hmm. speak to them and then what's another level for you I remember remember us discussing too was being a female mm-hmm. in that mm. reaching out to other females because they're just phenomenal in this industry of helping and empowering in a, in a vastly de- you know, male dominated mm-hmm. industry really looking out for one another and I knew they were you know there were several people that, that I knew who would really help you you know mm-hmm. and just say okay here's step one two yeah, three yeah. even though I didn't have all that for you right. like you know do exactly this um, so and that's what I was mentioning to Julian um, earlier today too it was just like in, all, in complete honesty like I wanted to know like did any of that help or work or not <laughs> no. or, and if the yeah. story was like that was the worst advice I ever got in my life that would have been okay because then I, I would stop saying it <laughs> no it it was awesome advice uh, and you so, so I took your advice and I went on LinkedIn and updated my LinkedIn profile for like the first time in like two years. Um, and actually since then I haven't gone back and looked at it because because stuff actually worked. So <laughs> there you go. So I went to LinkedIn um, and just like typed in uh, like I think production coordinator or producer like in Dallas um, and just like found a couple and I found women. I found this woman who like that's what it, that's what it said was her job. So I messaged her and I said, hey, uh, I'm like breaking out into the freelance industry, trying to kind of just like learn and meet people. Would you be open to like getting coffee, just kind of like sharing your story and like what, how you've been doing things and whatever. Uh, and she emailed or she messaged me back like almost immediately actually and was like, yeah, that sounds awesome. Like I love to meet up. So we met up at a Starbucks. Um, she was a super cool lady. Um, and she was just really, oh, what's the word? Um, just really open and like willing to share and like just kind of gave me this advice and talked to me about what she had done and how she's been working and um and so yeah we just had, we just had a conversation like we just got to know each other uh, and i asked her questions about just like how she got started mm-hmm. and like things that um like yeah how she got started what she what she did what she does now how she does it um and kind of the thing that the thing that i learned from that and the other conversations and also kind of from you is people want to work with people they know and like. Right. And so <clears throat> you just got to show someone you're a person too, mm-hmm. you know? Like I'm not a I'm not a piece of paper or I'm not a digital like resume or whatever. I'm not a right. number on a screen. I'm yep. like a person with personality <clears throat> or whatever. So I had, I had coffee with this woman. And at the end of it, she was like, hey, so I'm going to this DPA event, which is the Dallas Producers Association, which is like kind of what you're talking about, like these events that people put on like for networking and whatever. Yeah. So the DPA like puts on a lot of those. Um, and so she said, hey, I'm going to this networking event. Uh, would you like to come as my guest? Uh, like normally if you're not a member, you have to pay 20 bucks or whatever, but I'll like, I'll get you in for free. Like I know some people and I was like, yeah, that sounds great. And she was like, I can introduce you to some people. And so by developing a relationship, albeit brief with this woman, she decided for some reason that like I was cool and legit and she wanted to help me. And so I went to this event with her and she introduced me to a couple different people, mm-hmm. one of whom was this guy. Um, and um, I'll just call him Matt. That's not his real name. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So, so she introduced <coughs> me to this guy yep. and, and it was a brief introduction. Um, it was just like, hey, this is Cece. She does stuff. Hey, this is Matt. He does stuff. Y'all should do stuff together. Um, and we we didn't talk really like we kind of might have like you know just shot the breeze or whatever, um, but and I had actually so back up a couple few weeks I actually went to another DPA event with myself and another friend just like they do this kind of informal breakfasts um, and oh, yeah. so I went I went to one of those uh, and nothing really came from that but I saw this guy Matt there mm-hmm. um, 
and like we went all went around and introduced ourselves. Um, I remember him specifically because he was uh, saying that he was going to put on some sort of um, like little teaching class for new people who are trying to break in the industry. I didn't end up going to his class, but I approached him afterwards and I was like, "Hey, that's awesome! Glad you're doing that. I'd love to come if I can. Uh, if I can, I didn't." So then fast forward again, and it's this Matt guy again, and I'm like, "Hey." Uh, that's that's the guy that I saw. So like I, I recognized him and I was like, hey, I remember I wanted to talk to him or I wanted to like get to know him more, but I didn't. So like now I have another opportunity. So I'm really gonna follow up with him. So like we exchanged information um, and emailed him like, hey, you know, could we get coffee? I'd love to just like pick your brain about what you're doing and blah, 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 all the same stuff. We went back and forth for a couple of weeks, didn't actually um, meet up for, I don't know, like several weeks later. Um, and he was just, he was fantastic. He was so good. Um, we we went and got coffee, and I drilled him with questions for like an hour and a half. And he was um, he was just so gracious and so open and answered my questions. And he was just I was just so grateful that like, he was just willing to do that. You mm -hmm. know, like he like nothing nothing was off the table. Like I could anything I wanted to know. And trust me, I asked him everything I wanted to know <laughs> about just like. How do you crew up? Like, what is what is a producer's role? What do you do? Um, like, how like how do you kind of like budget for stuff? Like, what are what are typical rates for these kind of things? Like, how did you get started? Like, when you moved to Dallas and you didn't know anyone, like, what did you do? How did you meet people and reach out? Uh, and then like when you started like in your younger years, what what were you? And so I just like learned about him, drilled him with questions for an hour and a half, and at the end of that conversation. Um, he basically offered me a job. He was like, hey, so I'm going on the shoot on Friday and if you wanna come along and maybe we can like try each other out, like I could use you as a PA, which uh, in the video world is a production assistant. Mm -hmm. Bottom of the food chain, like very entry level <clears throat> position, but everyone's gotta start there. Uh, and, I was, and I was very open to like starting there. Uh, in fact, I'm still starting there. But um, so he asked me to come and be a PA on a shoot. And he, I think he said, it's a half day shoot. I can give you a hundred bucks, um, but I just, uh, I'd love for you to come out and just like see, like yeah, we work well together. Yeah, it's a great, because it's, it's that next level, right? right? So having a conversation, oh, I like this person, I can get along, this is great. Mm -hmm. Now, are they all they mm -hmm. say they are? Yeah. You know, it's that next step. Yeah, exactly. For sure. So I went on the shoot with him and just, we hit it off. Like we had we had a great rapport, rapport, rapport just like kind of joking with each other. And um, we just, we just, it was great. And then I, I kind of held up my end. And as a production assistant, like I, kind of proved myself in that way, like, hey, mm -hmm. I know production, <clears throat> like I know what I'm doing, uh, I can do these things. And so he must have liked working with me because actually I'm still working with him now. And he's hired nice. me for, I don't know, a couple, couple dozen shoots maybe. Wow. Um, like <clears throat> I've hand modeled for him. I've, most of it's been PA stuff. Hand modeling was like kind of like, just like <laughs> a fun little side one. But um, but yeah, so you were telling the the story about Mekon. What was kind of the uh, the ending lesson so behind yes. that? Or <clears throat> um, so Matt's name is actually Mekon. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gotcha. All right. Um, <clears throat> surprise. Yeah, um, Julian just outed him. There, there we go. <laughs> what's up, what's up, Mekon? Hey, Matt, Mekon. Yeah. So yeah, Mekon's super great. Um, yeah. So I met him through through this gal that I met on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. and uh, and he's been consistently consistently hiring me for gigs. Yeah. Um, and so that just speaks to reaching out to people, um, getting jobs through that. There's one more example that I'd like to um, just like tell of that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's this woman that I met, um, actually, well, while I was an intern still, I think, there was one of the friends that I had made through the internship posted online about this uh, film that he was making and they needed some extras. Mm -hmm. So like, that sounds fun. So I went, did that, met this woman named Kara, um, and like it was all fine and great. We did like the little scenes that we were doing. Fast forward, you know, to January 2017 when I'm like trying to reach out and meet new people and stuff. And I uh, like remember her and we haven't like, we haven't talked in two years. Uh, like we've, we were friends on Facebook and like all that stuff. So I've kind of been like following her and I knew that she worked as a like producer production coordinator. Um, and so again, going back to what Jason told me, um, I was like, hey, she's kind of doing, I think what I want to do. So I'm gonna reach out to her. So I reached out to her. Uh, and again, great conversation, asked her a bunch of questions, super helpful. Um, and she didn't offer me a job on the spot, but she did say like, hey, if the guys that I work for, if we ever need anyone, um, like you seem like you know what you're doing and um, you have kind of a lot of the same skills that I have and 
Um, so like we might, we could use you. Uh, so like, cool, awesome. Just another contact to add to like the list of people who would call me, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and so she actually did call me like a week later and they've, they've hired me for several things um, as well. So I guess that kind of just speaks to the point. You never know, you, you just never know, yeah. right? So you never know the person that you reach out <clears throat> to on LinkedIn, like, hey, I've gotten several, several, several jobs like through that maze. Mm -hmm. um, and then like with this woman, Kara, like I've gotten, I, I met her as an extra on this like film that I like did two years ago, haven't talked to her, reached out two years later, got several jobs from that. Um, there was a guy that I met on a shoot with, Greg actually hired me back um, like in my freelance time. Mm -hmm. And I met a guy on his shoot. Um, and at the end of the shoot, he was like, hey, I'm gonna give you this lady's number, reach out to her. She's a good person to know in the area. So I did, I reached out to this lady. And she was like, cool, I'll put you on my list of PAs if we ever need anyone. Um, and I was like, okay, cool, not expecting. Cause I, I never met her. I asked if she wanted to get coffee or whatever. Um, Cause that's kind of, <clears throat> I'd, I'd kind of been learning along this process that if you meet someone in person, you're a lot more likely to like, mm -hmm. they, yeah. they might actually hire you. Um, so I never met this woman. Uh, it was just it was solely email. I sent her my resume. Didn't expect to hear anything back from her. Got a call from her like a week or so later and turned out, so the like X-Men TV pilot was like filming in Dallas. Huh. And so she called me and said, hey, we need a locations PA. Are you available for these days? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I show up and it's the freaking like, X-Men TV pilot shoot, like Hollywood film trucks oh were gosh. rolling in, wow. legit production. Yeah. And I had no idea. Like this lady that I had emailed because this guy told me to email her that I met on a shoot with this other guy. Like you just <laughs> never know when the connections, and then from this woman who like called me for this X-Men shoot, um, like I got several other jobs from like people that she knew, like she recommended yep. me for these. So it was just, it's, it's yeah, it's crazy. Uh, so just don't don't close doors. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and and I think the other lesson there too, it, it, and this is <clears throat> this is almost harder, but to continue to mm -hmm. do that, yeah. reach out more, even when you aren't sitting there starving, <laughs> you know, yeah. and reach out because you see the value and how mm -hmm. these connections, and you just meet more and more people, and then you're quickly getting in that position to where you can do the same thing because people are going to start reaching out yeah. to you and you can start connecting this person yeah. to this person and it all just it's a beautiful ecosystem <laughs> in the way it works yeah it really is. i think really what your story is is exemplifying to me really is that it's not the real importance of like deliberately building your network and serving other people right because the truth mm -hmm. of the matter is like i wouldn't be where i am if it wasn't for jason Cece got a lot of the information that she got from, from Jason. And then you have benefited much from, it's like everyone sort of helps mm -hmm. everyone, yeah. never close the door. And it's, it's cliche to say, but it truth, truthfully is, is that your net work really is correlated to your net worth. You know what mm. I'm saying? So it's like the more actively you build. So, so Cece, just to kind of wrap things up, the truth of the matter is that you've gone from not freelancing to freelancing success. So if there were just like sort of three keys that have allowed you to get to from where you are, from where you were to where you are today, like what would you think those three things were? From from like leaping out from leaping to out where to, I am now. Yeah, yeah. Whew. Um, Stability in a very kind of like perceived unstable kind of you know yeah. thing. That's that's a big deal. So um, I would say perseverance <clears throat> is mm -hmm. key, and just pushing through the hard times. Mm -hmm. Drive for Lyft and Uber if you're strapped for cash. Like that's what I did, uh, yeah. and it was actually kind of fun. Like no <clears throat> joke. Um, so just persevere uh, and don't don't give up on that on that dream. Uh, and for me again, the dream of like working on projects that I'm passionate about, mm -hmm. and that like incorporating my faith somehow into that. Uh, and I'm still pursuing that. Um, but like to pursue that dream, like I have to like drive for Lyft and Uber sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like I have to do these other jobs that maybe aren't like related specifically to that. Um, and man, there were, there were so many times where, and especially like towards the beginning, I was wondering, I like, guess it's gonna work. Mm -hmm. Is it worth it? 
like I'm not getting calls back, I'm not getting jobs. Like, was this stupid? Um, and again, like that faith kind of like, that yeah. faith really helped keep me going because I trusted that like God was gonna get me through it and he was yeah. gonna give me opportunities. And then he did, he did come through. Um, and I did get these opportunities, but like kind of making it over over that hump yeah. of unbelief, I guess you could say, <clears throat> um, and just uncertainty and just accepting that it is gonna be hard. Uh, and it was hard and it's still kind of hard. Mm -hmm. Like it's, there are definitely things that I still struggle with. Like I have not figured it out by any means, but I'm, I'm getting closer. Um, so I guess that's advice number one. Um, <laughs> advice number two, uh, I would say is people. People is advice. Um, Honestly, I had very, I had a very good support group behind me. Mm -hmm. Like parents like were fans number one, you know what I mean? Um, and they, they supported me um, basically through the whole thing and just like telling me how proud they were of me and having that encouragement. Mm -hmm. um, and also like my friends and even like Greg, my old boss, like he was very supportive and encouraging uh, and having that support base um, really did help. Mm -hmm. um, and I understand not everyone has that and that's, that is hard, um, but if if you don't have like the family or maybe your friends, like finding like-minded people, even yeah, um, like finding a community. Uh, and I didn't really talk about this much, but I uh, I did find a community of other like Catholic creative people, yeah, um, like other like-minded Catholic filmmakers, and it's so inspiring to know that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so if you don't if you don't have that immediate support group, go out and find it. Um, go go out and find community people who like are passionate about the same things and who want to do the same things as you. It's just so it's just so helpful mm -hmm. <laughs> to to pursue your dreams, I guess. And then advice number three. Oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> oh, and then I guess on the other people side is of course networking. Yeah. Um, so like developing relationships not only with community but also like on the job side of things, kind of like what we right. talked about is treating everyone you meet like with kindness and respect mm -hmm. because you never know you just never know yeah you know <laughs> like the receptionist at the front desk like when you always hear like when you go in for an interview like be kind to the receptionist at the front desk sure because she might go and tell the boss if you're a jerk to her and then they're mm -hmm. not going to hire you like just right <clears throat> yeah. and, it's, and it's something that's that sounds so like well Number one, you just should be that way anyway, right? Right, right exactly. But, but that was really something that I, I know in film school, that was like, that was one of the lessons that, that my professor told us and was very, and so it's not, it's not just like, okay, don't be a jerk. Okay, well, I won't, but also be purposeful mm -hmm. in that. Like, I'm going to make sure that, because you get caught up in your day and you go through and, oh, you're nervous about whoever yeah. you're going to go meet, but to stop and be purposeful with that eye contact with that yeah. receptionist yeah. or whoever it may be and just makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. yeah, and when and when you do that, when you are kind and compassionate and just mm -hmm. treat people like a human person, um, <laughs> like what I did when I reached out to those people, and I just, I tried to get to know them as a person. You know, like when you're networking with people, like really do take interest in them. Yeah. Don't just like pretend you wanna get to know them because you want a job. Like, no, <laughs> don't worry about the job. Like that's, that's secondary to getting to know them as a person. If you, if you treat them kindly and like if you honestly invest in knowing them and like letting them get to know you if there's a job it's gonna come yeah 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 a person is not just like a job waiting to happen like mm -hmm. don't worry about that uh, and then the third thing I would think is find and I, I listened to your podcast and a lot of people say this so you probably yeah. know what I'm gonna say <coughs> uh, and it was even one of your questions is find your passion, find your purpose, yep. your calling. And for me, um, like, like I said, my faith plays a very huge role in this for me. And uh, it is the reason that I'm, that I'm doing this. Like if I didn't think that like God was calling me to like be a Catholic woman in the film and video industry, mm -hmm. like I wouldn't be doing it, let alone like succeeding in it. Um, and so if you have that, um, like faith or just if you know if you're if you're not a faithful person if you like don't believe in God or whatever 
um, just like find your purpose in life. Find the thing that you know makes you tick and makes you um, like wake up and be happy in the morning and want to go to work and want to do the thing that you're doing. Yep. Um, it's just so much more fulfilling when the stuff that you do, when like it matters to you mm -hmm. and you think that um, it's making a difference in the world, you know, however small that difference is, whether it's yeah. like, you know, one-on-one -on -one interactions with people, whatever, it all counts. And uh, gosh, you know, just, you can tell when people are passionate mm -hmm. about what they do. And you, know, you can see that like spark in their eyes and like when they talk about it, um, you can just tell. So whatever that is, um, I don't know. That's yeah. my, does that make sense? No, it does, it does, <laughs> absolutely. And I'm a really big do what you love kind yeah, of person. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think uh, I think that's all really great advice. So, yeah. so Cece, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast. Thank I'm you. so happy for all the success, success that you've had. Yeah. So, like, if people want to connect with you and work with you, like, how does that happen? How does that happen? Well, I do have a website that has my contact info on there. <clears throat> it's ceciliastevenson.com, C-E-C-I-L-I-A. S-T-E-V-E-N-S-O-N dot com. Um, and then like my email address is on there. You can just shoot me an email. Uh, if you want to grab coffee, I'm all about <laughs> grabbing coffee. I mean, I don't like coffee, I'll get tea. Right <clears throat> but uh, if you want to go out and like talk about each other, and, like get to know <laughs> each other. Um, <clears throat> or, or if you like, I don't know, need someone with producer, editor skills, I don't know, uh, whatever, reach out. Or if you just want to hang out, that's cool too. Um, so I also, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I don't really have jobs to offer people. Um, not, not yet. That's like, that's the goal someday is to be able to like hire people. But yeah. So far, I'm just still trying to get jobs for myself. So, um, and then kind of the other thing is I've been trying to, <laughs> trying is the key word there, um, kind of make a YouTube channel um, that has been like documenting my experience freelancing thus far. So I go into a little bit more um, depth on just the journey thus far. And I, uh, I will admit the past um, couple months, because I've been so busy like with actual work and stuff, um, I haven't been able to like make one. So I, maybe after this, I'll go home and film it. Um, but if you want to kind of know more about like week one, week two, week three, week four, literally every week for at least the first like 10 or so weeks, I made a video like this is what happened, this is what I learned, this is, so if you wanna just know more about like the process of that I went through, uh, kind of just like the raw gritty mm -hmm. failures and like what it's like driving for Lyft and Uber and uh, like when I got my first job and um, you, can, you can find me on YouTube, just Cecilia Stevenson, I think is my channel name. Um, cool. Well, yeah. make sure to plug all that stuff in the show notes. So thank you again, CC, Jason. Thank you again for, for co-hosting sure. as always with me. And thank you all for tuning in to another episode of The Pathways to Success. As always, depending on where you're hearing this, make sure to subscribe to the podcast or the YouTube channel. And we'll see you next week on the next episode of The Pathways to Success.